KNBC 9 News starts with breaking news. I'm Chris Katz. Breaking news coverage is a mainstay of KNBC 9 News, documenting the defining moments in Kansas City's history. It's something our crews have been doing for decades. This is where tragedy struck in Kansas City. We were there on August 18th, 1959, when six firefighters were killed in a fiery explosion at a gas station on Southwest Boulevard. 100 more were hurt. KNBC 9's Charles Gray covered the chaotic scene. Danger was everywhere. Suddenly the flames brightened. It was apparent the fire had eaten its way to one of the big tanks. One explosion and a fireball followed by another sent the flames hundreds of feet into the air. And there it goes. The flames engulfed six firemen who tried to run. They couldn't get away from this inferno. Had the explosion come in a slightly different position, KMBC TV news cameraman Joe Adams would surely have been among the casualties. 40 years after this tragedy in 1999, a memorial was dedicated to the six firefighters who lost their lives that day. It's still here, along Southwest Boulevard, just north of 31st. We have had a major explosion at 87th and 71 Highway in the area is still affected. In November 1988, six more firefighters were killed in a tremendous explosion at a construction site on what is now 71 Highway. Firefighters responded to a pickup truck on fire and found a second fire burning nearby. Those flames spread to a trailer filled with 25,000 pounds of explosives. The blast killed six firefighters and could be felt for miles. 40 minutes later, a second explosion as the fire continued to spread. KNBC 9 News covered this story for a decade until 1997. Again, the defendants Frank Shepard, Skip Shepard, Darlene Edwards, Brian Shepard, and Richard Brown all found guilty when of When five people were convicted of arson and murder. We're glad that justice has finally prevailed. In 2013, the picturesque Country Club Plaza became the scene of a deadly explosion. JJ's restaurant was leveled by a natural gas explosion after a contractor in the area struck a line. I actually saw a flash, and then we felt a big kaboom, and then our house just shook. Johnny Rollins first spotted the flames from News Chopper 9. He was over the scene for hours as crews fought the massive fire. An employee of JJ's, Megan Kramer, was killed. 15 others were hurt. After a year and a half, JJ's was able to reopen across the street from its original location at 48th and Roanoke. One of the biggest breaking news stories of the last decade happened in Overland Park. KNBC 9 news crews were first on the scene at the Jewish Community Center and then nearby at Village Shalom. A self-declared white supremacist said he wanted to kill Jewish people when he opened fire on April 13th, 2014. 14-year-old Reed Underwood and his grandfather, William Corcoran, were killed. They were at the community center for Reed to audition for a youth singing contest. The gunman, Frazier Glenn Cross then drove to a nearby Jewish retirement home where he shot and killed Terry Lomano, who was visiting her mother. None of the victims were Jewish. Cross was arrested, convicted, and eventually sentenced to death. He died in prison in 2021. Kansas City's Channel 9. I'm Kelly Eckerman. A journalist's job is to document the news, but there have been times when KMBC 9 staffers became the news. This tumor will almost be gone after two months of therapy. In 1991, longtime anchor Larry Moore was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was the health reporter and spent a year documenting Larry's battle against cancer. Larry, this was such an emotional time for you, and yet you decided to go public with this, to let us follow along on your journey. Why is that? It was certainly the right decision going public because uh, we were able to conduct an educational campaign really throughout the following year in coping with cancer. And, and of course, the scary thing is you look back, and it was scary then too, we had no idea how, how it would end. 30 more days of my cancer would have been fatal. Larry told me continuing to work while going through treatment actually helped him by giving him something to focus on. He received more than 2,500 letters from viewers during his battle, something he says kept him fighting until his cancer went into a remission. Hey, How you doing? I'm Jason well. Graff. KMBC 9's Chris Ketz also opening up about his own health condition after his wife took video of him sleeping. 
We showed the video to a doctor who determined Chris was suffering from sleep apnea. So this particular apnea, you didn't breathe for 38.5 seconds. <laughs> then a trip to the sleep center at St. Luke's on the Plaza, where Chris was fitted with 22 electrodes, measuring his heart rate, brain waves, and breathing. So Chris, I'm gonna go ahead and turn these lights out. Chris was diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. He stopped breathing an average of 91 times an hour. This was so severe, staffers had to wake him up after two hours and put him on a BiPAP machine. It's different. It is. It takes some getting used to. I'm glad you did the story. One viewer from Shawnee wow. reached out saying she had the same symptoms and was diagnosed with sleep apnea by her own doctor. She told Chris the stories he did likely saved her life. You've seen her on First News every morning since 2001. But behind the scenes, KMBC 9's Donna Pittman has been navigating parenthood with two children battling a rare disease. Do you need help pushing no, or you're good? good? Donna's youngest son, Gabriel, was diagnosed with a form of Pompeii disease. He lacks a certain enzyme that breaks down sugar or glycogen in his muscles. Over time, the glycogen will build, suffocating his muscles. We feel like we are in a race against time, but we're also um, we feel like time is on our side. Doctors monitor for signs the disease is advancing in Gabriel's body. If it is, an aggressive and expensive treatment is next. Enzyme replacement therapy is the only approved treatment. There's no cure at this point. I believe he will be able to do what he wants to do. We'll face, if he can't, we'll face it then, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if I can allow myself to really, truly think about a lot of the far future. At the time in 2018, Gabriel was one of just 12 people in the world with the same genetic mutation. Since then, Donna's daughter Isla was also diagnosed with Pompeii. We are happy to report both children are doing well. From KMBC 9 News, where the news comes first. There have been moments KMBC 9 News crews found themselves in danger. Let's get in the ditch. Do it. Let's where are we going to go? Let's get in the ditch. Okay, okay. <laughs> Me too. Oh my goodness. There have been moments we found ourselves in the middle of the party. Hey, party my mom's, man. She's out of town. I got a keg. Let me sleep. It is just, it is twilight dark. Moments captured by KMBC 9 cameras. It's as dark as night. Look at that. Look at the horizon, everybody. To bring you complete coverage across Kansas City. Wow, look at that. Look at that! We're celebrating 70 years of Kansas City and KMBC 9. 